You're listening to the Just Japan Podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to episode number 88 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. My name is Kevin O'Shea, and I am a Canadian living and working right here in Japan. And I am the host of the Just Japan podcast, a weekly podcast that brings you different aspects of life in Japan, different aspects of the culture, the history, living here, working here, traveling here, all kinds of stuff. And with, hey, 88 episodes in, we've got another great one. And I say that each week because I mean it. Um, this week, we're going to be talking to Ryan Cabal, who is a kendama guy. What's a kendama? Well, it is a famous traditional Japanese trick toy. It's really popular with children here in Japan and becoming more and more popular abroad as well. And not just with children, but with adults as well. Now, Ryan is someone that I've been、uh, keeping tabs on for several years.、Uh, many years ago, he first popped up on my radar when he submitted a video to me. In the、uh, series, the uh, Japan um, collaboration videos that I used to put together for YouTube.、Um, so, what I used to do for several years <clears throat> on YouTube is I would ask、uh, my viewers to submit videos to me. I'd, I'd put up some kind of theme, like what's your favorite Christmas food, your favorite Christmas drink, and I would have、uh, other YouTubers send me video clips and I'd link them all together and make like a big, giant video. And many years ago, Ryan sent me a video for that.、Um, now, actually, Jim Mullins, Mully of the Mully's Place podcast, he has、uh, you know, carried the torch on with that project of the collaboration video, and he, he takes care of that.、Um, and now I, I follow Ryan on Instagram. He's not very active on YouTube, but he's very active on Instagram. He's got quite a big following on Instagram. And Ryan does a lot of cool kendama tricks and stuff. So, I thought it would be really awesome to have him come on the podcast and talk to you about a really cool traditional toy that is quite prevalent and you see them all over the place in Japan. So, this podcast will be coming out、uh, just a few days before Shichi Gosan. And Shichi Gosan is a very big event here in Japan. It's going to be a big event this year with my family.、Uh, Shichi Gosan is a traditional rite of passage, according to Wikipedia.、Um, And festival day here in Japan for three and seven year old girls and three and five year old boys. It's held annually on November 15th to celebrate the growth and well being of young children. It's not a national holiday, so it's generally observed on the nearest weekend. But、um, the actual day itself will be on a Sunday this year. And my daughter, who is two now, but she'll be turning three next year, my son is five this year, we decided to celebrate it together. So we've rented kimonos for them. And we will be going to a local shrine here in Kobe、uh, and taking photos. We'll be going on the Sunday, the 14th, not the actual Shichigo san day itself. We were, originally, we had planned to go on that day, but then we realized that the Kobe Marathon is going to be run that day. And、uh, the Kobe Marathon is a major marathon, more than 20,000 runners all around downtown. And the finish line is、uh, right by my house here on Port Island in Kobe. So, there's not a chance we would be able to get a taxi downtown.、Uh, we'd be planning on taking a taxi to, the sh- to a shrine because my kids will be dressed in kimonos and we can't really take them on the train easily. And besides that, the trains are going to be so packed with runners and their families. Think about it 20,000 runners finishing a major marathon、um, here、uh, on the island, and a lot of their families come to see them finish. <coughs> You gotta excuse me, guys. I got a bit of a cough this week. Not sure why, but I do. So, yeah, so that's a big deal.、Um, Kobe Marathon weekend. That's always exciting. It's gonna be exciting to go out and cheer、um, uh, the crowd, the, the runners on. I myself have run it twice in the past, to, to,、uh, twice the full marathon. And、uh, it's great. It's a lot of fun. I can't wait to get up there and cheer people on. And I'm looking forward to running the Kobe Mini Marathon with my son that day. We're gonna w a n t to run a 1.6 kilometer or one mile marathon. Mini race, and we'll actually get to finish by running through the finish line, the actual official finish line of the marathon. And、uh, that's exciting for my son, and exciting for me to watch my son do it. And I can't wait.
Now, of course, if this is your first time listening to the Just Japan podcast, you can find us on iTunes, on Stitcher Internet Radio, on SoundCloud, on the Libsyn Player. We're all over the place. And I want to thank you for taking the time to download the episode and listen to it. And I want to take you, thank you for taking the time to share it with all of your friends and family and on your social media, which I'm sure you will. Um, of course, you can always email the podcast with any questions. Uh, we do have a mailbag section. Not this week, but next week we will have it back again. So if you have any questions about Japan that you would like answered, send them to me at justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. Justjapanpodcast at gmail.com. Any other feedback is always appreciated. Any other questions, um, that kind of thing. You want to shower me with praise, lavish me with gifts. Hey, you know, send me an email. It's always cool. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, I will. I always want to mention my uh, my Etsy shop, Luck of Japan. That link will be in the show notes at busankevin.com. All the links I talk about tonight will be in the show notes at busankevin.com. That's my YouTube nom de guerre. Um, so without any further ado, let's jump right into the show this week, where I talk to uh, Ryan Cabal about Kandama. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the interview portion of episode number 88 of the Just Japan podcast. Everything you want to know about Japan. And, and this evening, we're talking all about Kandama. And I have uh, a guest uh, coming all the way from Korea, actually. Hey. He, well, he's in Korea right now. Um, Ryan Cavall, thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me. I mean, I've been a longtime subscriber slash listener slash followers slash instagrammer that, that's of yours awesome cool it's so <laughs> it's it's so awesome to actually be uh you know to get get to meet not in the flesh but you know to be able to chat and and uh and share some of the coolness that you do um, um yeah thank you and, yeah and before we get into that the, the mm-hmm. coolness that you do folks you he he does some cool stuff and you're, you might already be saying, what the heck is Kandama? But we're going to get into that. But first of all, um, Ryan, can you tell us, uh, can you introduce yourself to the Just Japan podcast listeners? Maybe tell them a little bit about where you're from, what you do, where you live, all that jazz. Hey, everybody. I'm Ryan Cabal. I live in Seoul. I'm an English teacher, originally from Southern California, but um, now I'm living in uh, the busy and bustling life of Seoul, like I live and breathe and smell it every day, <laughs> but uh, yeah, not, not not always the best smell. Not always from the best my me- smell. from if, if memory serves me. <laughs> uh, man, Hongdae has been very like saturated with like a, a huge influx of foreigners from all over. So it's just like you know a melting pot over here. Well, wow, so okay, so you're in Hongdae, okay. Mm-hmm. Now I I know that area quite well. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, w- what is Hongdae? So Hongdae... For, for those who don't know, so like so again, Ryan lives in South Korea. He's a teacher mm-hmm. in Seoul, and uh, Hongdae. I mean, that was a place that was just like when I, I mean I, I'm an old timer. So like I was I was living there in like two thousand and four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. just Whoa. it was it was hip. Mm-hmm. And it was a cool place to be, but only for Korean people. Oh, and it was like uh-huh. just starting to kind of like open up a bit. Like, I mean, okay. it was a place where you went. If you're a foreigner, you just went there for the clubs. Yeah. And that was all. Mm-hmm. But uh, so what, what is what is Hongdae? And, and, and what, yeah. Yeah. So Hongdae, um, well, Hongdae stands for like, I don't know what Hong means, but the day means it's like short for uh, big or another form of like, uh, what was it? Tehakyo, which is Daigaku in Japanese. University. Yeah, dai, Daigaku. That's a, the the big university is Hongik Hongik De Hong uh, Hongik University. <laughs> right, right. No, you're right. Hongik Tehakyo. Yeah. Hongik University. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like um, it's really popular because since it's a uh, university, um, a lot of things have been or a lot of um, businesses are fairly affordable because, you know, the students, they don't have too much money, so they go around and they just want to relax after studying, and they'll essentially, like, have, like, nice bites to eat because there's a lot of good, like, if you're a foodie, Hongdae is a great place. Uh, if you like clubbing or meeting new people, um, there's, like, Language Cast, which is, like, a meetup for people who are um, new to Seoul, who want to learn languages and practice. 
Nice. Um, so it's um, it's pretty pretty bumping. In fact, I think it's too much for me to handle as of late. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's it's. I remember I I used to live um in Shincheon nearby. Mm. Oh. I was like in Mapogu, like near uh, mm-hmm. Sogong University, Sogong Day. Right. And uh, you know, Hong Hong Day was a place. And to be honest, I mean, that was in within walking distance. But I probably only went there a few times a month. And definitely always used to go there for club night. I don't know mm-hmm. if that exists anymore. Oh yeah, every Friday or the last Friday of every month. Yeah, the last Friday of every month, where you mm-hmm. get like a bracelet and you pay like it was like 40 bucks or 30 bucks and you could mm-hmm. basically go like it was like free cover and like a ton of clubs oh yeah you just uh, go <coughs> hopping all over yeah yeah cool so there you are you're teaching english um how long have you been in korea um yeah i've been in korea for about uh well two years in incheon uh okay. which is like where the airport is and then um, every weekend I would go to Hongdae, and then once my contract finished finished in Incheon, I thought like, where is Hongdae located? Like I come here every weekend, I might as well try and find a job and live here. So I found Mapogu, and uh, that's where I work, but I live in Hongdae. Okay. So Mapogu is not too far, and I've been living in this area for about three years. So in total. Five and a half, five, six years. Wow, okay. Uh, Mapugu, that's where I lived. That was only one year. But, um, wow. Oh. Yeah, Mapugu, I lived. I, I, uh, oh, oh, I mean, you, I, you, don't, you don't need to mention where you work. But, I mean, I worked in Korea a long time ago. I used to, uh, when, I, when I lived in that area, I taught at the uh, Shincheon Pagoda. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Pagoda is uh, no, it's always a, a busy place. Always a busy place, but... Uh, Oh, damn, I remember. I don't know if they still do it, but the split shifts. They had something called split shifts, and those used to just rip you apart. That's like, what, you work for a bit, and then you have this massive You work, break. like, you got to wake up at, like, oh, God, you, your first class is at 7 a.m., mm-hmm. and, and you teach from, like, 7 a.m. until about 10 p.m., oh, 10 a.m., uh-huh. and then your next class would be at, like, 6 p.m. Oh, dude. And you teach until, like, 10 p.m., so it was just the it was brutal. Um, yeah. So I think pretty much everyone I mess had met or I, all my colleagues had really messed up sleep patterns, and most people would would quit after a year or so just because they were just sleep deprived. Oh, I I yeah. No one sleeps in the afternoon. Like that's kind of weird. You can try, you can try, <laughs> but if you live in Mapogu, man, it ain't happening. No, no, no. It's it's quite noisy. Like these yeah. houses are very. Um, I can hear when my neighbors using the bathroom. Like yeah. it's that it's the walls are thin. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 that was a thing. It was always everyone to talk about. I try to sleep, but I can't. Um, okay, so okay, now uh, just Japan podcast listeners, you're saying mm-hmm. why the heck are you talking to a guy who lives in Korea? I mean, <laughs> now, now of course I have a Korea connection. For those of you who are listening mm-hmm. who may not know, I lived in Korea for five and a half years, and I was a teacher. I was an English teacher in Korea. Um, I lived in Ilsan outside of Seoul for two years. Mm-hmm. I lived in Seoul for about a year and a half. And then I lived in Busan for the remainder of my time in Korea. AKA Busan Kevin. Y'all know what I'm saying. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, which is where <laughs> I met my Japanese wife. What in the world? <laughs> which is why I live here. My Japanese wife, who the, the woman I'm married to now, who is from Osaka, I met her in Busan. That's awesome. So for those of you who don't know, that's why I'm here in Japan. I had no idea. I I'm messing up somewhere because no, no, yeah, 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 no, no. I met a Japanese woman in in Busan and fell in love. And I'd already been accepted into a teacher education program in Canada, um, but I've been saving up for years. And my wife, or then my fiance, moved to Canada with me while I was a student. Mm-hmm. And I got my my teaching degree as an elementary educa- elementary school teacher, and then uh, moved to Japan afterwards. Now you have some beautiful kids, and you yeah. live in like, man, you live in Kobe. It's like that's a nice city, man. <laughs> uh, I was actually, you know what? I was just there. Really? Yeah, I went for, <laughs> I went for, oh, geez, what was it for? I think it was a a competition for the topic. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I I was like dry, I I took the Kobe like you know from the port right and I yeah. like headed towards ah oh, jeez the I was there at the Kobe like Tokyo hands 
And I was like, ah! I should really like just hit up Kevin. That's so but, close to where I live. Like I'm like I I never spoken to him. I, yeah, I okay, follow well, him on yeah, Instagram. Uh, oh, you should have let me know. I'm the uh, I'm the kind of guy who would have come out to to, to meet you. Yeah. But okay, uh, but ooh. but I'm sure you'll be back again. For sure. We hope. We hope. Mm-hmm. Okay. So okay. Yes, the topic at hand. Yes. Um, all you guys, uh, Ryan has a really awesome uh, Japan connection. And as an elementary school teacher here in Japan, I teach at a an international school. Mm-hmm. So it's all English, it's all this and that. But, you know, most of my students are Japanese. And uh, there's I, I, I can tell you, there's, there's a little posse of girls in grade three right now who are just so awesome at um, a really cool, I don't know, is it a toy? I guess it's uh, a toy. Is it yeah. a yeah? It's a toy. It's a thing called a kendama. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Ryan, uh, you can definitely tell us better than I can. What what is a kendama? A uh, kendama is a it's a wooden skill toy that consists of three separate pieces of wood. Um, it's like so. There's a ball. Then there's the middle part, which they call the sarado or sarado. And the long part is called a ken. And those three parts attached to a string is called a uh, kendama, which is basically a Japanese traditional skill toy. So a, a skill toy. Um, so you guys are like, what is a skill toy? Mm-hmm. Well, um, what is a skill toy? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, a lot of like people a long time ago, you know, they just were really bored with their hands one day and they were like, Oh, what can we do? So, you know, juggling was born. Yo-yo was born. And a skill toy just basically helps out um, hand dexterity, focus, um, re- reflex skills, and so on. I think there's also a lot of like problem solving skills involved in there too. Oh, of course, yeah, most definitely. Once so, uh, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of thinking and focus involved with these uh, toys. Oh, uh, massive concentration and time. <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> a lot of time. A lot of time, which is uh, something I'm hoping to. Soon invest in. I'm 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 about to uh, embark in the kendama kendama challenge. Oh, um, I hope I hope. Well, I mean, I would. I mean, I hope. But it, honestly, I mean, <laughs> depends on how serious you take it. Two, two to three minutes a day is all you need, really, if you're going to embark on it. But I mean, if you want to get, <laughs> if you want to get good at it, it's a different story. So, um, the kendama and and for those of you who are like really not sure, like you're like, what the heck is this? I can't visualize it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to the show notes at pusonkevin.com. Um, I will post some pictures and some videos, um, bang, bang. you know, so you can see uh, what 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 the heck this is, and uh, you'll also see like in the the art for the uh, for the episode, there'll be a picture of a kendama, so you'll you'll see, and you'll be like, oh, that's what that is. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, some people would call it like uh, the Japanese ball in a cup game. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's uh... it's way way more. Well, I mean, just because I've been watching some, I mean, I've been watching your videos on Instagram. <laughs> I'm following, I don't know how long I've been following you on Instagram. Uh, uh-huh. mu- I think pretty much since I started Instagram. And mm-hmm. uh, once, once, uh, and I, I, you know, and you still do, you post lots of photos of Kandama, like really cool ones and this and that. Um, but once the, like, uh, the video feature came out, um, you started posting uh, a lot of videos of, of yourself doing tricks. With the right, right. Mm-hmm. And um, I got to admit, and I don't know if, if you read that, I sent you some questions. Uh, for the last like two to three years, I've, or two years, I've actually um, been showing uh, a, a lot of your videos on Instagram to, stu- <laughs> to students at my school. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely, definitely. Like, I mean, um, it's, it's like a really small on the iPhone, right? I'm always mm-hmm. showing the iPhone, but like we do have a, a, a crew of kids at the school who are pretty damn adept with the uh with the kendama and i've been showing them like sometimes from time to time like hey check this out and i'll show them some of your videos oh i'm like actually uh the only reason why i'm in seoul the kind of a secret well i couldn't get into japan so i uh i'm working here (laughs) okay so you couldn't get into japan okay let's let's bounce over to there and oh no well, no, no, okay. 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 No, no, we can, we super, superficially, it. superficially. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to give you lots of encouragement because... Oh, uh, cheers, cheers. Um, I'm, I'm all, okay, I'm all so, so basically, I mean, you, you had you'd corresponded with me and said you had applied for some jobs and mm-hmm. didn't have any luck finding work in Japan. Right. It was um, tough at that time. Now, now that was uh, what year? 
That was the year when Nova. Oh, um, yeah. That was like Everyone, 2008, right? 2008, yeah, 2009. The, the Nova bubble pop. Oh, yeah. dude, man. The only thing that would have gotten you a job at that point was being an actual certified teacher. Mm. Like, uh, uh, I came here in 2008. Yeah. I came here in 2000. I'm going to just, if it's a loud uh, sound came from my computer, I will just silence that. Um, I just, I came here in 2008. And mm-hmm. uh, to be honest, um, like the school I worked for at the time, they said the only reason why we hired you was you have an actual elementary school teaching certification. And th- that, that was, was the yeah. year that like Nova had collapsed. They were just like, it was insane, the job market. Mm. Um, <clears throat> if, if you didn't have experience, like, huh, because I mean, if, if for those of you out there who don't know, Nova was at the time Japan's largest uh, eikaiwa. I- so yeah. like language school and I mean it had something like seven or eight thousand teachers and uh, basically the president had been embezzling money and oh. ripping it off and da 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 um, and uh, yeah so it just basically collapsed and all of a sudden there was like thousands of of international teachers here in Japan who all of a sudden didn't have a home didn't have work oh so yep. whatever there was out there. They were all scrambling towards no matter what it was. So someone like you, who, you know, you were probably, I'm, I'm assuming you were in America at the time. Yeah. You were trying to, you had no teaching experience. You had never been here and you were competing with people. Like, I mean, it was probably, I'm assuming per, for every job, there were just hundreds of people applying who had lots of experience who were actually here in Japan, who probably actually had visas. So like during that time, 2008, right? 2009, mm-hmm. I like graduated and I went like gung ho and was just like, all right, I'm just going to buy a ticket and go to Japan, find a job. That was like the stupidest idea (laughs) ever. (laughs) It was like basically a three month mini vacation of me stressing out the whole time. (laughs) Oh no. Okay. Um, I went all the way to like Yamanashi Ken, like in Kofu, I think. Wow. Uh, In the middle of nowhere. That's like, like one, one side of uh, uh, Mount Fuji, like one of yeah, around. There. Yeah, I'm actually Ken. Is that Ben? Is that where you live, Ben Benjamin Mortensen, who has been on a few episodes of the podcast before? Ah. I think he lives in Yamanashi Ken. Um, ben, he, uh, I don't know. Are you familiar with? Um, are you familiar with Molly? Oh yeah, that guy took my job. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah no, no. Molly <laughs> no, of the Molly's Place Molly. podcast. Molly lives in Shizuoka, and I think Ben lives in Yamanashi, and uh, actually uh, drove drove to visit him like something like uh, like like several hundred kilometers on a 50 cc motorbike. Whoa, that's that's pretty badass. Yeah, but uh, Yamanashi can okay. Yeah, so that's that's like Inaka. That's like countryside. Yeah. So you, you but you, even in countryside, it wasn't happening, mm-hmm. huh? No, it wasn't happening. They were like. Sorry, you don't have enough experience, and you do not have a teaching visa. Sorry. But you know what? Um, here's where the, the, the ray of light comes in. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you still have an interest in Japan. I'm, I'm telling you right now, man, With your, I'm, I'm sure with your resume now, with the experience you have, no problems now. If you decided you wanted to come to Japan. Yeah. One, to- uh, Tokyo is always a tricky – Tokyo is a tricky one. Tokyo is mm. a challenge. Everyone wants to go to Tokyo, right? Tokyo. Not this guy. Okay, well that's you're a smart man because I wouldn't want to go there either. Uh, <laughs> and, and no, no offense, all you awesome people who live in Tokyo, maybe who are listening. Tokyo is a freaking awesome city. I love you. Guys. I just personally wouldn't want to live there. Mm. It's just too hectic. But it's also like because of the fact that like over the years of being a YouTuber, like so many people are like, I want to go to Tokyo. I want to go to Tokyo. Mm-hmm. It's really there's a lot of competition to get teaching jobs there, and then um, the cost mm. of living. Those teaching jobs. Don't pay much more than if you were to teach in the boonies. So, but you gotta t- you gotta pay Tokyo prices for rent and uh, transportation, and all that, just like meals and groceries and everything is more expensive. Uh, uh, I don't know how you guys do it. I don't. <laughs> I don't live in Tokyo, so it's all right. But that, yeah, for all you people who are listening who do, um, <clears throat> but um, but yeah, yeah. Now, now you've got a you've got a really great resume. You've been teaching and different places and yeah yeah i hope to make it out there someday if not um like actually i prefer the kansai area i love kansai it's a beautiful place great people uh yeah it's 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 kind of like um a lot of people compare osaka uh-huh uh, osaka to japan is like busan to korea 
Ah. And I got to admit, man, like I, I lived in Ilsan. You know where Ilsan is? That's right. Like that's a stone throw from where you are. Yeah. Yeah, up in in, in Gyeonggi-do. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, I lived in uh, there for two years. I lived in Seoul. I lived in Mapogu for a year. Then I lived down in Jamshil near Gangnam. Damn, that's far. Uh, yeah, Jamshil's a boring <laughs> place to live. I li- actually, I lived in. Do you know Songpagu? Songpagu. Uh, near no, Oli- Olympic Park, old Olympic Park. Okay, yeah, yeah. I lived there for a couple of months, and that was a, a company that I realized quickly they actually didn't weren't legally allowed to hire me, so they didn't want me to. They couldn't get me a, an actual real teaching vi- uh, real visa, so they just wanted me to like renew my tourist visa oh damn and you had to come back like that kind of thing in and, and out so of the country th- so then i just quit and left and got a, re- a job at another school but uh, and then i went to jamshul um but uh but i mean at the end of the day it's like i know what you mean like like osaka is is, is way more laid back it's more mm-hmm. chill the people are more gregarious and mm-hmm. and um but back to kandama let's jump yeah. back there i mean i could just okay I'm, i apologize just japan podcast listeners i lived in korea for years um you know it's fun to talk i'm reminiscing <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> nostalgia <laughs> i'm talking to a two guy who's lived in places i've lived um but okay so the kandama which is this really well-known um japanese uh you know skill toy mm-hmm. and i mean you know, you see people using it. I mean, it's not like you don't see people using it on every every corner. But I mean, like when you you do you do walk into classrooms, occasionally you'll see them. You see them in toy chests. You go to mm-hmm. toy stores. You go to Toys R Us. And actually, I think there's been a bit of a resurgence recently because when I go into Toys R Us, various you know, I've got a five and a two year old, right? So mm-hmm. I go to different Toys R Uses, Toys R Uses, um, yeah. and I see um, like even near the front of the stores these days, like like kind of kandama sections. Oh, with man. like real hip looking ones and p- flashy plastic ones and this and that. So how how did you get into using this thing? Um, where, where did it begin? What's what's your origin story? <laughs> I, oh, man. The, the Kendama origin story. Oh, man. 2000, like before I graduated, um, I studied a lot of Japanese and we even hosted a few kids um, during like a foreign language exchange program. So, uh, like at your family's house, right? Okay. And um, they, we invited them into our home. They were awesome kids. They like played with like Nintendo DSs and stuff. And then when they left, they were like, "Oh, here's a kendama." And I was like, "What is so some this? kids? So basically, some exchange students who stayed at your house gave it to you as a gift." Right, because, um, oh, man, they were so sweet. They were just like, uh, I remember one of the kids' names, Issei, and he was just like, uh, thank you for very fun trip. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, dude, awesome. But, uh, you know, how do you play? So he showed me, like, how to put the ball into the cups, and then he, like, got the ball into the spike, and I was like, wow, this is pretty awesome. You know, I'll give it a shot, and then, Farewell. Um, from there, I went online and I typed in uh, Kendama and I found a filmmaker, like a rollerblader slash filmmaker. Okay. And his name's um, Colin Sander. C-O-L-I-N-S-A-N-D-E-R. And he was on like video number two or Kendama video number three. And I was like, man, he's like playing some pretty cool tunes. He's landing tricks and using like fisheye lenses and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, wow, you know, I could do this. So my brothers and I, we just practiced for a bit. We went online and tried to find out how to buy kendamas. And from there, it was just like for a good two years, we just played kendama every day. How long did you play every day? Oh, whenever like just whenever you had a free chance, basically. Yeah, when we had a free chance, like uh, we we stopped playing uh, computer games because the internet back then was too slow. (laughs) So we just uh, we just played kendama, and um, it 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 was really hard to kind of um, take turns when you have three brothers. Well, one kendama, three brothers. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of fighting and arguing. I bet. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I had to work and then earn money, get my own kendamas. And yeah, the rest is pretty much history. 
Cool, man. So, like, when you're living in the States, where would you get them from? Uh, back then, you couldn't, you couldn't get them anywhere, really. You'd have to go to Japan or... Uh, was there any kind of service where you could order them or buy them? Yeah, there was. Uh, but, like, not at that time. Like, maybe a few years later, like, some websites popped up and they would buy them wholesale and sell them uh, to us. Okay. Um, and, yeah, uh, we would buy them online after, like, a year or two. And then... Um, at that time, like no one really played. It was just my brothers and I, and we had fun. Mm-hmm. But no one got to the skill level, like you know, to like the same kind of the same kind of level that you've witnessed, like on the on Instagram. Like uh, the way I'm playing these days is so much different from when I first started, because we didn't have smartphones back then. Like basically now, like I mean, if if you want to learn how to do it, I mean, you just open up this the beauties. Like I mean, I mean, I bought okay, I bought a kendama the other day. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like a five hundred yen one from Daiso. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But I know it's not gonna break immediately. I know it's not the best, but yeah. I just it's five hundred yen. It's not hyakuen, so like those ones will break in a in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. But like, I bought it, and I'm like, okay, but I've got YouTube. And I know oh, yeah. I just have to type in any question I want, like, how do you start playing Kendama? Kendama beginners tutorial, whatever. And videos will pop up, and I can actually just sit here and start trying. And I can learn a few of the basics, and I can just go outside of the park, or, like, when I have a break at work, and I can just step outside. And, um, you know, it's, it's yeah, I mean, we everyone out there has this amazing resource called the YouTube. <laughs> yeah. YouTube or Instagram. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and I think videos are pretty key. I mean, like just like you know, going to a static web page and looking at photos of how to do it. That mm. oh man, back then we had like GeoCities websites and like you know, like really like well, you know, before nasty like gifts. I, I before we started recording, I I told you like the only comparison I have to this is like when I was in junior high school, I was really into yo-yos mm-hmm. and uh, I had a couple of buddies. When I say like I'm not like for for you guys out there like listening you're like you kids really into yo-yos i mean like, i don't know i was really seriously into yo-yos um we had a, a group of guys in my small town and we we had like uh where we i think it was called the canada game top was the wooden yo-yo of choice and i had a whole bunch of them and then we just buy packs of, of 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 strings for them and we literally had a book it was like a small book that you could buy a kit with the canada game top extra strings <laughs> Oh, and and the book and the booklet and then you're just kind of like looking at them like all right, what do I do with this? How do I do this? And then we just kind of figured it out. And there was me and a few other guys. And I had a buddy named I always remember Jeffrey. Jeff was like he was like way better than me, and he, uh, he was like the king. And I was kind of like his protege. And like <laughs> I kind of like learned from him. Mm-hmm. And but we you know like sometimes like in at recess we would gather a bit of a crowd around doing tricks and stuff like shoot the moon or. Like, oh man! Like, well, shoot the moon. I can never do shoot the moon. He could do shoot the moon, but like, there was like different like tricks. Even like, you know, like, uh, God, you, the simple ones like walk the dog or a monk mm-hmm. in the elevator. And I remember these tricks. I, I remember this vividly. But I just remember so much practice in the bedroom, mm-hmm. just like in my bedroom all the time practicing. If you guys don't know what shoot the moon is. And if you find out what it is, I basically hit my face first time trying. <laughs> oh, it's like you can easily break your nose and knock out your teeth doing it. It's Pretty like much. firing yo-yos up into the sky. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then it like comes back and forth and you're just like trying not to get hit. But uh, <laughs> technique, right? Technique. Yeah, I definitely had more than one accident. Got a few lumps doing that. But um, okay, so uh, y- okay, so the Kendama thing, you're, you're, you, you've got – into the kendama thing um and so how okay i'm curious mm-hmm. as as far as okay instagram mm-hmm. now that's where i enjoy watching you and for all you guys uh out there listening um ryan how can people find you on instagram um just the the app mark and then rice so funny r y s o f u n n y rice so funny Mm-hmm. And you, you got it. You've got like pretty much five thousand followers. Um, almost, almost, yeah, almost getting close. <laughs> Maybe after this podcast, after a few weeks, this podcast is up. Hopefully, you will. 
Um, um, thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks, guys. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, how, how did how, so? Um, you know, now that we have smartphones and cameras and this and that, mm-hmm. how how has that helped you take the 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 kendama to a different level? Oh man. So with with Instagram, I can and like the the usage of this beautiful thing that you love and you hate at the same time, hashtags. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um yeah, I I've been able to like build an audience and make new friends. Um I basically just put in the hashtag kendama and then I can type it in Japanese, I can type it in English, um, I can type it in uh, Chinese characters, and uh, like there's a bunch of communities that use these hashtags where Kendama is being played. So, mm. so I can just find out who all these people are, send them comments and support, or just like, you know, oh man, you know, I love the way you play, or like, I love the, your style, your tricks, and it's just like, you can practice, you know, you can challenge them like, oh, hey, check it out. I did this trick. I dare you to do this. Or we call it a Dama dare. And oh, okay, so, cool, cool. So we'll challenge each other. And it's like, yo, I did it. Um, you have until like the next day to do it. If not, then, you know, I win type, type of thing. Cool, 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 cool. So, I mean, you know, I was curious about community. And obviously mm-hmm. there is a big community out there. Mm-hmm. Very um, international. Yeah, I mean, I've been noticing that. Um, did you see the pictures I sent today? Did I send those to you uh, on Twitter? Oh gosh, no, maybe I didn't. Ah, I okay, yeah, I was so friggin' busy. I was, okay. I was in, um, I was in. Uh, uh, actually, I went to, uh, <coughs> I went to a public library mm-hmm. today with my class, and uh, I was, um, I'm actually. I don't know, do you have your phone with you right now? Yes. Well, you're going to see a few images coming in on your Twitter in a moment. Mm-hmm. And I actually, uh, I, and I don't know who these folks are. But, oh, my gosh. But I found, a, I found a book about Kandama just, like, on, like, one of the shelves. Uh-huh. And um, I just, like, took a few photos, and I meant to send them to you earlier. I'm like, I don't know who these people are, but they're, like, not Japanese. They're, like, a bunch of foreigners, and it's, like, pictures of foreign competitions and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I just sent them to you on Twitter right now as we're talking. Um, I was there. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not in any of these photos, but I was at this event. You know the guy that's holding the golden... Yeah, um, the big giant kandama. The big giant one. I sat next to him on the bus, and I helped him out with his uh, winning run. So where is that? Uh, Hatsukaichi Hiroshima. Okay, because I can't read kanji. Oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Everyone out there, yes. Just Japan Podcast listeners, I've never studied kanji. I know some kanji, but, uh, and, and I'm not ashamed about that. I just, like, you know, I, yeah. I can't. Mm. Priorities. Mm. Priorities. <laughs> no. Job, career, family. No, 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 no. Um, you know, podcast. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, yeah. Gotta yeah. do it for the. Gotta do it for the podcast. <laughs> Study kanji, no equals, no podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah yeah so um I have my, my kanji skills are crap which basically means i can't read anything um because you, know, you learn how to read kira, uh, hiragana and katakana <laughs> though kanji is like a point um, <coughs> um on the yeah on the, photo, on the photo or in the book where mm. it it's on the top right where there's like um two or there's a group photo it's like three guys uh-huh three guys on the red part it says kendama de sekai o tsunagu which mm. Which is like, you know, um, Kendama brings the world together. Ah, cool. Yeah, they've been using that kind of catchphrase uh, as of late. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's true, <laughs> basically. That's awesome. That's really cool. I mean, uh, it's uh, it, it's been really something that's really of, of interest to me recently. I mean, that's why I went out and I bought one. I actually, I bought this before I contacted you. Oh, it's... <laughs> What? Bought my kandama just like uh-huh. a, a week before. No, mind you, it's still sitting in the box. I'm tapping uh-huh. the box. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm tapping a box that's sitting in front of me, but um, that none of you can see. So it's, it makes for great podcasting. Um, you know, it's all it's all about. <laughs> there it is, guys. <laughs> oh, some dust just came off it. Damn it. Um, okay, so uh, as far as okay, so you live in Korea. Mm-hmm. What's 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 the kandama community like there? Oh man, the I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you're really active in it. 
Um, I am, to be honest with you, like last year, there was no, there, there, there's, there wasn't a scene. Like it was, like very, pretty much non-existent. Um, I had to go fly to Osaka. Like mm. I, I went to Osaka like seven times last year. Okay, well, if you're coming again this year, now that now that we've done this <laughs> and we've chatted, um, the next time we gotta meet. Oh, uh, you know, um, give me a break, man. Uh, he. Uh, yeah, Vic. Yeah. Yeah, Vic. He he like, because I've been a I've been a big fan of J vloggers like like the OG crew, um, who's still doing J vlogging. The old style. The yeah. Style, that's- <laughs> That's OG Sun crew. The the like Hiko Simon, Busan Kev, Victor, uh, Hi- Hiroko Channel. Oh yeah, yeah. Um Hiroko, she yeah. had a, she had a kid, so she's mm-hmm. inactive. D- inactive now that she's yeah, yeah. Uh Mikaela or <laughs> yeah, Shiela? Yeah, Mi- yep, yep. She's still uh, very active, very successful mm-hmm. down in Fukuoka. Mm-hmm. And uh last one I'll mention, Bobby Judo. Oh, you're down in Saga, I believe. Saga camp. I don't. Uh, he's like he's a TV personality now, I believe. What? Yeah, yeah he's. I mean, I'm. I, I don't really know him very well. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's. Uh, he doesn't do any more English stuff. I think mm-hmm. on YouTube, I believe. But he's a TV presenter. Oh, that is very cool. Like, so, which means obviously he's a completely a very fluent Japanese speaker. But I'm. Oh, pr- right. I'm pretty sure like he's just like on Japanese TV now. That's what he does. That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, I like I followed you guys for a while, and I was just like, uh, let's see, um, yeah, Korea didn't really have a scene, so I'd go to Japan, play kendama, and then come back and just play by myself in my room. I never come home. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. I would go outside and play, but no. But I do understand if you mm-hmm. if you want to be good at something like that. There's a lot of solitary time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got to practice. You got to be by yourself. Um, but now we have like, uh, people in Pusan who play, ah. believe it or not. And then when oh, there's I believe it, man. People... Pusan people are awesome. Oh yeah. Pusan <laughs> people are very awesome. I love you, Pusan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, we have the Seoul people, but, uh, you know, people are so busy in Seoul. So uh, busy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Like, can you recall like good friends? Like to come out and hang out with you, like Korean people who would just come out and hang out. Oh, okay, with you. I, was, I was just about to say okay, and then when you, I'm like, yeah, I can't. Oh, Korean people. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> and what I just but, mean, I know you mean like just like just a busy, 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 busy. Yeah, not that they don't want to. It's just <laughs> they can't. They're well, that, so... that, that that was like the amazing thing about like moving from Seoul to Busan. Mm-hmm. I think one of the first things I did when I got there was like, why the hell didn't I move here earlier? <laughs> because like. I lived in Handegu, uh-huh. right by Hande Beach. Yeah. And then, like, every weekend, th- like, all year long, even the winter, there were beach volleyball nets set up with foreigners playing beach volleyball. And there were all these, like, steps with just foreigners every weekend just sitting there drinking coffee, drinking other beverages, too. Mm-hmm. You know, adult beverages, depending on the hour. For some people, the hour didn't matter. Um, <laughs> but um, it was just, you know, I'd get up on a... Saturday morning and water down to the beach and just like drink some coffee and hang out and meet people and play some volleyball. And then afternoon would come and he'd be like, all right, let's go get a beer or something. It was just like way more chilled. Oh, no, so I, not I think, here. Yeah. So I think like boost some people are like way more chilled. But yeah, yeah, you're right. Soul is frantic. Mm. So it's, it's a frantic lifestyle. I think very much like probably I, I'm, I'm going to assume like Tokyo. Mm, yeah, you could say like Tokyo. Um, just people like sometimes they won't give you the time of day. They they are very nice. Like they'll help mm. you out. Yeah. Yeah, nice people. Just mm-hmm. busy people. So busy people. I mean, I'm I'm assuming if if you're going to meet if there's going to be a bit of a, a kandama scene there, is it mostly foreigners doing it? Um, I would say it's like eighty percent foreigners and like twenty percent Korean. So those uh, foreigners who are doing it, are they English teachers? Are they people from America? Are they from all over the place? Uh, What's the deal? There's a, a univer- There's a few university students who play. Um, I've just been handing them out to my students. Like, 
I'm like, here, guys, you guys are on your phone too much. T- take a break, you know, try and do the things that I do. And then they're just like, oh, thank you, teacher. What, what age group are you teaching? I teach, um, I teach uh, s- from six-year-olds okay. to uh, middle school. Hmm. So do you basically cut around a big basket of kendama? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Just, well, I mean, which is freaking awesome. I'm just like, that's wicked. And you're just like, <laughs> guys, go for it. Mm-hmm. I have like, um, I have like these tickets where mm-hmm. if they do a good job, then you know they can rent a kendama from Ryan Teacher. <laughs> smart, smart man. That's smart. So that's it, a good it, idea. Yeah. Um, then they can like bring it home. They can play with their family. They can show their friends. And then when they're done, like after seven days, they return it. And then if they want to play some more, then they just have to like do well on the next earn, test. Earn another one. Yep. Ah. Hmm. You hear that, everybody? That's smart teaching. That's called a reward system. <laughs> a, a good a good means of behavior management. Nice, nice. Um, awesome. So, so the community and, and, and Seoul right now, um, you said it's mostly, mostly foreigners, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I'll throw it to her, mostly Weigooks. Yeah. Weigooks, right. Weigooks, Gaijin. Mm-hmm. Weigooks, Gaijin, um, Gaikokujin. So, uh, um, but there is like a middle school student who's a yo-yo player ooh. and he is probably one of the best Korean players in Korea and I'm just like you're learning at a very quick rate you're gonna pass me in no time um I just can't wait to see you like play you know or I just can't wait to play with him and like hang out with him it's awesome when you meet when you meet people who are gifted right it's Mm -hmm. it's also really amazing when you meet those people who have like a natural gift and you watch them you're just like all right that person's gonna like surpass me like whoa but it's (laughs) really amazing that you're gonna do that yeah i can remember teaching some kids in korea many years ago in busan i taught a gifted class Mm -hmm. um i used to teach at you know cdi yeah uh tongdam institute yep i taught there for my last couple of years and uh I taught a class in, in, in Busan. I remember a middle school boy saying, I mean, now, well, now all my students call me Mr. O'Shea, but at the time it's like, Kevin teacher. Kevin oh, teacher. yeah. Kevin teacher. You're, uh, you're very smart. You know, you know so much. Why, why do you know more than I do? And I'm like, well, because I'm a lot older than you. And actually, you're a lot smarter than me. <laughs> and that's, I remember saying that to him because mm-hmm. I, that was one of the things I remember. A lot of a lot of a lot of teachers who teach uh, gifted students have hangups about it mm-hmm. because sometimes it can upset them, and mm-hmm. they have like some pride issues. Yeah, the kids ask some questions that they can't answer, and the kids challenge them in snooty ways and this and that. Aww. And I'm, I'm I was always very very open about like I'm just like, hey, you're smarter than I am. I know more than you because I've been alive longer than you, mm-hmm. but. I don't know the answer to this. You don't know the answer. Let's sit down and figure it out. Research. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember this kid being like, yeah, I just remember him like, uh, who was really gifted? Yeah. Why, why do you know more than I do? I'm like, well, because I'm older. But you're smarter. <laughs> so um, when you meet kids who are like really gifted at things like, you know, drumming, guitar playing, yo-yos. Oh, yeah. Kendama, just like, dang. You know right away. You see them, right? You're like, mm-hmm. ah, ah, that kid's got it. You're like I'm not even gonna be jealous. Like I just gotta Maybe support just just, you. just support and admire, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then someday say, "Hey, remember me when you're big." <laughs> when you're remember? big and you're doing an interview, <laughs> say, "Hey, remember <laughs> when you're like famous on TV?" And be like, uh, "I got this from my teacher Ryan." I remember Kevin teacher yeah. Ryan teacher. Ke- Kevin teacher inspired <laughs> me to do this, or Ryan teacher inspired me to do this. <laughs> and that's basically my job, like just inspire people. That's. Because I'm, I'm well, I guess already... that's what, as a teacher, that's what we do, right? Oh, of course. Ideally. And like when you have skills and you just because like in you know in um, when you're teaching, like you have to be somehow cooler than a mobile phone or mm. you know more attractive or more amazing than a Xbox an Xbox 360 or a PlayStation, which, which is well. yeah, which yeah, is yeah. which is hard, but you know you it's possible. You can do it. Well, I think you can do it with like the videos you have and stuff. Like, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, <coughs> excuse me. 
Uh-huh. And just Japan podcast listeners, excuse me. I'm still, after three weeks, just recovering from a cold and all that oh. stuff. And now I think there's a new a new bout of allergies kicking my keister. Um, but uh, yeah, so no, exactly. You said like it, it's it's all about competition with. Mm-hmm. All those modern distractions that the kids have. Mm-hmm. It's not even about modern distractions. It's just about like what's what's building your I think what when, when it comes to something like Kendama, I mean you're building like kids who are really good at this, adults who are really good at this, um clearly have like amazing focus skills. Like 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 just their fine motor skills, even gross motor skills. I mean these are all things I need to improve. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like just like the kids I teach. They yeah. they're um like <coughs> I've I've noticed myself like when things fall, I catch them before they fall. <laughs> mm. And it's just like p- kids will be like, "Whoa, teacher, good catch." Or nice. And then I'm like, "Kendama." <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I totally get it. I totally get it. I bet you've got like just like these like really instant sharp reactions, and you're probably much more aware of things around you. Um, I'm oh, I've been kind like of. A, I, I guarantee you probably have a like a razor sharp awareness of shit that's going. Oh, pardon my. Oh my god, mm-hmm. that's the first <laughs> bad word I have said on the Just Japan podcast in oh, about no. thirty or forty episodes. But nonetheless, so uh, apologies for that. You have razor sharp awareness mm-hmm. <laughs> of stuff. That's going on around you. <laughs> yeah, um, I it, it requires that like observation and learning from your mistakes, because mm. um, you have to make small adjustments and then you know just small tweaks and you can actually like you know reach your goals or become successful in not only kendama but you know other walks of life if you will if you just pay attention. Mm. Cool. So I'm curious if if, mm-hmm. if people want to go and buy a kendama, right? Mm-hmm. I want to go get a kendama. Um, what what should you know? I I I don't know. I don't know what one is, but I've just listened to this podcast, mm-hmm. and I want to try one out. Um, what what should people look for when buying a first kendama? Where, I mean, okay, obviously people, our audience are in many countries, mm-hmm. uh, various places they can buy them. But mm-hmm. what what? What kind of price range should they be looking for for a decent beginner kendama? Uh, if you're in Japan and you're uh, kaijin, you can find them like you can find a decent one for like a thousand five hundred yen at uh, Tokyo Hands mm-hmm. or uh, Toys R Us. Toys R Us. You can get them at uh, Yodobashi Camera of all places. Really? <laughs> in the in the in the toy section or the Oh okay, okay. Om, om, omocha, I think. Omocha, omocha's mm-hmm. toy, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're roughly around a thousand five hundred, probably cheaper in Kan in the Kansai area. But in Tokyo they were like almost Nisei in. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think I mean I've seen them in Tokyo hands for one thousand five hundred yen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um which is about fifteen bucks. Twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. Fifteen to twenty bucks, I guess, is kind of the decent uh, uh, range, and you're looking for um, kendamas made from the Nihon Kendama Kyokai or the Japan Kendama Association. Okay. Yeah, and they're usually labeled with like seals or colors, um, like yellow or green. Um, you my, have to. I'm, look... I'm looking at my the one, <laughs> the, the one I bought from Daiso for 500 yen, and it doesn't have that. Oh darn it! I can I can send you some photos of uh, oh, okay. official ones. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. So send people can me. definitely check those out. I'll, I'll put those in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Boostonkevin.com. Go there. Boom, check boom, it out. boom. And uh, yeah, th- those are um, played or they are selected by um, a lot of people who do competitions, and okay. those are recommended. Like these, the ones with the seals, and you can't go wrong with them. Like they are perfect. Like nice. Perfect first kendama. It, they're not very expensive, but um, you know they're they won't break on you. So I'm curious now. Mm-hmm. Someone like you who is mm-hmm. very serious in the kendama. What kind Uh-oh. of prices do you pay for premium kendama? Uh, premium kendamas. Well, mm, damn. <laughs> uh, I've paid. 
Okay, just for the ball. Okay. I could like just for the ball. I paid about two hundred dollars. What? Oh my! F- <laughs> I I I. I <laughs> what? Really? Okay. No, but I mean, okay. All right, okay. Uh, Kevin, calm down for uh-huh, a moment. Uh-huh. This is something that you do, and I mean, I, at the end of the day, I think of what I do, <laughs> and and a, like a podcaster, and I pay uh-huh. I paid about the same for my microphone. Uh huh. So okay. Don't judge, because, right. like, that's... I'm just like, really? Oh, like... <laughs> wow. What a sad life. <laughs> but, wow, okay. So, I mean, obviously there's... there's. I mean, no, I mean... Okay, Kevin, stop, calm down. Uh-huh. And <laughs> say to yourself, now, obviously, there's a, there's a real skill and craftsmanship mm-hmm. within that ball, balance, weight, all kinds of jazz going on, I'm assuming. Uh-huh. Um, so... So, continue... And quick I'm probably story. gonna freak out again. <laughs> just, just a quick story. Mm-hmm. Um, before like this certain kendama, like I got one of these for free, and it was a complete one. Like there was a ken, a string, a ball, and a white package. And I was like, cool. How much did it cost? I was like, you know, twenty, thirty dollars in two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. And then in two, like now they're selling on Yahoo auctions or eBay for like two, three hundred just for the ball. Wow. Yeah. Um that that particular um that particular uh, company discontinued and they were like, we're not gonna make any more because um we wanna make more money but we can't because you're limiting us. Like we can only sell them for like not we can't sell them for a premium price. We have to sell it the same price for like everyone else, like as the same, like the other companies. Okay. So everyone who makes kendamas for this jet, the Japan can kendama association, they have to, you know, keep it relatively low for everyone to buy. Okay. Okay. So this factory was like, ah, this is kind of lame. We kind of need to make money. So sorry. So they were like, they left that after years and years of, you know, making kendamas for them and those discontinued kendamas were like sticky so it was very easy to do tricks like very difficult tricks ah okay okay and people were just like this is like you know this is the holy grail to like landing everything um if you have this kendama you know you can basically like win competitions like really easily so uh, they were discontinued, and they just have been selling, like, and, reselling. And do they every once in a while make a few more? <laughs> no, no, they, they never made them. They, oh, so okay. they just, like, were being sold and traded, and the value just kept going up and up and up. Is, is, there, is there any kind of, like, craft cottage industry for, like, building kendama? Um, there must be, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Of, are there like people who are like are like artisanal kendama makers out there? Yeah, actually, making premium awesome ones who are just like like you know like mother effing cool ones. You live in uh, you live in Canada, right? Where where? Co- no, Canada? I live in Kobe. Kobe. Uh I mean, you you're from Canada. Yeah, I'm a Canadian. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. My friends who live in Edmonton, mm-hmm. they hand turn exotic woods like purple heartwood or maple like canadian maple wow, okay. uh, walnut uh, oak and mm-hmm. um, they sell them for three four hundred dollars a pop wow like the kendama the the like the, the the kendama the ball the the string all that like a set for 300 400 bucks exactly wow yeah. okay yeah I, I i figured i figured this is the kind of thing where there would be that kind of artisanal craft mm-hmm. aspect to it nice 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 now were those people who had lived in japan and done it or where where had they learned how to do that um you know maybe that's for another maybe that's for another episode mm-hmm. uh mr alex smith he okay. uh, he hand turns them in canada i don't know where he learned actually but uh he's he's definitely he's a young he's a young man um, very talented, artisanal, uh, has access to woods, like rare exotic woods, like ebony and 
uh, Rosewood, stuff like that. And well, if, if you're going to be uh, at the end of the day, if you're in Canada, it's a place to be to get that. Even even those exotic woods are, I think, often quite affordable. Mm-hmm. Uh, just due to the supply. But when of... they become a Kandala. <laughs> Kanaka Sandman. Mm-hmm. We got wood coming out of the yin yang. Um, <laughs> wow. Cool, cool, cool. Um, well, you know, okay. So, um, I don't, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh-huh, no problem. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. So, mm-hmm. um, if people want to find you mm-hmm. on social media and they want to check out all your Kendama stuff, uh, and just chat with you. <clears throat> and after listening to this, I think a lot of people might want to contact you with some advice or, mm-hmm. you know, questions about Kendama. Where, where can they find you? online on social media you can find me on instagram at rise funny um there's me on facebook uh though it's kind of personal i don't really mind um but yeah twitter all as well rise funny just instagram and twitter rise yeah, funny are main, yeah yeah i think you're you're most active on instagram right mm-hmm. uh for youtube um i tried the <laughs> blogging thing a few times uh i i'll just have to you know be consistent. The, just... the, he has a channel, everybody, but it's mm-hmm. not active. But there's yeah. a channel. I'll put a link in the show notes. At the oh end of the God. day, at the end of the day, if you want to really check out what Ryan does, go check out mm-hmm. Instagram. Cheers, man! Thanks a lot for that. And I'll put mm-hmm. all those links will go in the show notes at boostonkevin.com for this episode, episode number eighty-eight. Holy yeah. goodness, we're we're, we're getting oh, close to hundred. Uh, for just like quick advice. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Quick, quick advice. Throw it um, in there. Uh, don't buy too many condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> uh, all you need is like, like at most, maybe five. Uh, uh, don't buy too many. Um, challenge your friends. Uh, learn from your mistakes and just have a lot of fun. Like, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's it's a skill toy that's meant to be like played with people and it really has connected me to people who I never thought I would ever meet like I was well, you, do you know um are you familiar with Itaewon? Yeah, 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 of course. Okay. Itaewon. Um just I was just jamming along the street in one of the alleys of Itaewon and some guys from Singapore were just like Yo, is that a kendama? And um, I was like, Yeah, uh, it is. Um, you guys play? And they're like, Yeah, we love kendama. We just started playing. Like, can you show us some tricks? Are you like a legit player? Blah blah blah. And I was like, I I guess. So I showed them some tricks, and then they were like, Oh my gosh, you like my senpai? <laughs> no way. Okay, cool. cool. And, and I was just like, You know, who the hell are these guys? What the freak? And then. I find out like they were there for the League of Legends uh, tournament. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and then and they brought their kendamas and they found me, and then I asked one of them. I was like, "Oh, you know, um, uh, what do you do?" And he's like, "Oh, you know, I just do YouTube." And I was like, oh, "Okay, what's your what's your channel?" And he's like, "Oh, it's uh, Tree Potatoes." Uh, tree Potatoes, like YouTube.com, and then Tree like tree and then potatoes okay and i was like cool so i look him up and i'm like dang you're like a comedy channel with thousands of subscribers like what the heck and he's like oh yeah you know i don't really play it you know i mean i don't really like tell too many people about it but you know it's just i'm very passionate about writing I'm, 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 I, I just clicked on it right now three hundred and sixteen thousand subscribers yeah Tree, and pota- w- tree potatoes. Yeah, tree potatoes. And uh, he's just like, um, they're, they're based out of Singapore. They oh, yeah. made their own little company called Serial Kendama on Instagram, at Serial Kendama. And I met these guys just playing Kendama down the streets in Seoul. That's awesome, man. And I'm, and if you were just I, mucking around mm-hmm. in the street, having some fun with your Kendama. No joke. And. Th- they were just like very open minded, very friendly, and like, is we just had like an instant connection. It was, it was like awesome. Cool, man. That is cool. That's one of those things that things like YouTube has. Mm. I, I've I've connected with people by YouTube that way, 
or just like we're content creators or content creators there you go you know we're we're podcasters or we're this <laughs> or that you know we struggle with the same software <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh my goodness but that's awesome um mm-hmm. cool man well i'm gonna put all for all you guys listening all the links uh that ryan has mentioned that he's talked about to connect with him they're in the show notes at boostonkevin.com go check him out go follow him on instagram youtube he's not so active there but especially instagram yeah go check it out um ryan thank you so much for joining us tonight on the podcast i really appreciate it thanks so much for having me a lot of nostalgia in like for however long we've been talking yeah an hour or so it's all oh, good it's mm-hmm. yeah, cheers. nice cheers man yeah next time japan i'm there yeah yeah you tell when you area. get over here like kevin let's hook up we'll go have a drink together of course of course yeah, yeah. please hang up and try again well, I want to thank Ryan for taking the time to stop by the Just Japan podcast. Of course, um, all of the stuff we talked about tonight is really awesome. And all of the links we talked about, we mentioned, um, and any way to get a hold of Ryan, all the links are in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. Go check them all out there. Um, yeah, I'll be sharing that, uh, the, that, that link to the show episode, the show notes, all over my social media on Twitter, on Facebook, and all that jazz. Um, so, Ryan, again, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by episode number 88 of the Just Japan podcast. It's always great to get a new friend of the podcast on board. All right, folks, so of course, take the time to stop by my Etsy shop, The Luck of Japan. Lots of cool Japanese products over there, handmade products, other ones. Um, Christmas is coming up soon, folks. What a great place to shop. If you're interested in Japan and you want to share uh, the awesomeness of Japan with your friends and family, Check out my shop. The link will be in the show notes at BusanKevin.com. Just go to Etsy and type in Luck of Japan. Lots of cool stuff there. Of course, like I already mentioned in the show, you can find the podcast on iTunes, on SoundCloud, on Libsyn, on Stitcher. Uh, yeah, you can, of course, find me on social media at on Twitter at JLandKev. You can find uh, – jo- take, take a look at the Facebook page, guys. Go like the Facebook page for the Just Japan podcast, Busan Kevin community. Uh, almost 3,000 strong – it's awesome. It's vibrant. It's fun. A lot of people being very active. That link's in the show notes, of course, at BusanKevin.com. Lots of news links related to Japan, videos and stuff all there. It's very good, very fun. You can, of course, email me at JustJapanPodcast at gmail.com. You can check me out on YouTube at uh, BusanKevin, YouTube.com slash BusanKevin or YouTube.com slash JLandKev. Lots of fun. Japan content there. Lots of cool videos about Japan. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Um, but yeah, that does it for another week of the Just Japan podcast. I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to the show. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate it. Um, the fact that you take the time to download this makes it worth doing. And, uh, you know, it's 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 a labor of love. Uh, you guys are great. I love the feedback you give me. Um, I'm always really Please, when I meet someone in person who listens to the podcast, that makes me very excited and very happy. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm a bit tired. Uh, basically burning the candles at both ends the last couple of months at work, and that won't be – there will be no light at the end of the tunnel until December um, when I have my winter holiday. Until that time, it's just a matter of uh, kicking the tires and lighting the fires and are there any other – colloquialisms or sayings i can uh, yeah yeah so that's it i just gotta keep on chugging along (laughs) all right guys so that does it for another episode of the just japan podcast my name is kevin o'shea i am a canadian living and working right here in japan i want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this weekly podcast all about awesome japan i want to take uh the time to thank you for sharing it on your social media sharing this podcast in your twitter and talking about it in your youtube videos talking about it on your podcast talking about it on your twitter your facebook right right you're doing that i hope you better be doing that you better be doing that help the show get bigger and stronger by sharing it and of course if you do listen on itunes or stitcher take the time to leave a review and a rating it helps all right guys that is it i'm out of here Uh, Wherever you are in the world, I hope you are happy. I hope you are healthy. I hope you're doing well. And I'll be talking to you in a week. If you got a minute to spare, don't go anywhere. Stay right there. Because Kevin is about to speak.